that uh, these questions are coming from USMLE Step 2 CK clinical exam. Uh, but I think they're only uh, comparatively easy, easy questions. So I'm sure you can <laughs> you can answer the questions easily. Sure, I can. Yeah, but don't be don't be disappointed if you don't know answers. Can I make a note? <laughs> no, maybe you don't. <laughs> okay. uh, this GI means gastrointestinal GI you know, about digestive system. I picked up this topic among many topics because I think it's easy to. Um, but easy to review some important topics in a short time. Not cardiology. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. So, okay. Doesn't oh. work. Doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I can use this. Oh, okay. Woo! The digestive system is, you know, a, tu a, a tube, it's a thin twisted tube from your mouth to your anus. So the food is going so through your mouth, through esophagus, and goes to stomach, and goes to small and large intestine, and finally ends at your anus. Okay. Is it in the front? Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, plus, <laughs> plus there are some other, um, some other organs, like the liver, and pancreas. It can produce or store some digestive chemicals. Okay, let's just start. Questions. Oh, I have some questions. Whoa. Number one, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's why I said we need you. <laughs> because, uh, we need you. I can't wait to you. <laughs> no, 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 you can. You can. Questions. Don't worry about it. Okay, we're sorry. A uh, 37 year old male comes to ER due to hematemesis. Hematemesis means uh, vomiting blood, and he has a history of Papier's disease. And a nasogastric tube lavage is coffee ground like material. So, in the emergency department, uh, doctor use nasogastric tube, which is a thin tube through your mouth, uh, through your nose, through your nose, and uh, goes to your stomach. And tries to trying to aspirate some fluid, and it the results are uh, coffee ground like material. Oh, too mm -hmm. much coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah, coffee like uh, bleeding blood. Been eating coffee. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and physical examination reveals pallor and delayed capillary fill without signs. Just, just forget about it. And mm -hmm. his temperature is no more, which is no more, and mm -hmm. blood pressure is eighty five over forty. It's very, oh, very yeah. low. Yeah, very low. And pulse, pulse is So, which is very fast, tachycardia, and respirations are 18, which is no more. Which of the following is the most appropriate first step in management? Can you ask the answer? C. Surgery. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We have three numbers again. Just cut. Kind of open. Kind of upper GI endoscopy, but BP was low. So. Yeah, we have focused this. Yeah. BP is very low. Mm -hmm. and Give him something so then his heartbeat would be too slow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and do something that's not going to um, 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 kill him. How about fluid resuscitation? He's been throwing up blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, can, uh, uh, choose the answer. E. <laughs> e. Oh, no. Okay. E. E. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Oh, you're right. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Doctor's wife. <laughs> I still think we should cut. Surgery is the best. Like I said before, um, we have to focus this. Uh, this condition, so the, pa the patient is uh, hemodynamically unstable. So, um, his um, systolic blood pressure is lesser than 90, and pulse is more uh, over 100. So, uh, no matter what the underlying condition is, we have to consider. Uh, we should consider uh, ABC. 
A, airway, B, breathing, C, circulation. And, wow! <laughs> it's one of the first things toxicology students do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, C, A, B. Circulation. Yeah, first. Is circulation first. is first. Mm -hmm. Inflation, A, B, E, R, and intact. Airway breathing, you don't have to worry about it. But circulation is very bad. So, um, before upper GI endoscopy, to uh, find out what's causing his blood, blood vomiting, but uh, we have to consider fluid resuscitation. And after that, we can, we can use upper GI endoscopy. And this is the question about upper GI bleeding. There are many problems and many conditions that can cause upper GI bleeding. And uh, the most common is catheter disease, gastric ulcer, duodenal ulcer, yeah. and the second one is a fibro gastric barics, and others. Wow. And this condition, we should consider hemodynamic instability. And when the patient has, this patient also systolic BP less than 100, and the heart rate more than 100. So in this case, we have to consider fluid, fluid resuscitation first. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. And second, number two. Uh, can you just read, um, how can I say, go around reading? Oh, take turns. Yeah, take turns. <laughs> Can you read this? A 34 year old woman complains of occasional diarrhea and crampy lower abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep, keep it my turn. Yeah, take keep, turn, reading, keep reading. I'll take, keep, uh, keep reading. One yeah. question. Uh, yeah. She says that at times her symptoms hamper. Her performance in important important business meetings. The pain sometimes of course occurs after meals, but it's not always preceded, preceded by eating. The pain is often accompanied by diarrhea with small amounts of stool and mucus. Her past medical history is significant for bleeding hemorrhoids. Her mother died of colon cancer. Which of uh, which of the following following findings is most likely in this patient? Yeah, thank you. And this patient uh, has occasional diarrhea and crampy lower abdominal pain. And other than that, um, um, what um, uh, it is accompanied by um, diarrhea with small <coughs> amounts of stool and mucus. That's what I have. Mm. Oh. Yeah, it's, it is very common. common. Yeah, about but my my mother did not die. <laughs> no, she's yeah. still alive. I think oh. this is just um uh, makes us um uh, how is it freak 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 out freak out. Yeah, this is just um, trick mm. colon cancer and hemorrhoids. So not what's related. The of yeah, not related. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. In the future, but, maybe. Uh, <laughs> What's the meaning of lower colon mucosa? F. 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 Uh, F. Normal. F. Normal. 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 Folic acid deficiency, I don't know. Too much, <laughs> too much Mexican food. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> hemorrhoids. <laughs> hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah, hemorrhoids. Her past medical history. C. Folic acid, acid deficiency. Yeah, um, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but I like C. <laughs> <laughs> if a patient has folic acid deficiency, um, maybe she has uh, anemia. 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 Okay. Anemia. Okay. Not C then, I never said yeah. C. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have an anemia. It's gotta be D. 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 Duodenal ulcer. ulcer. Um, What's duodenal? Uh, du it's um, after ulcer from duodenum. Duodenum, uh, uh -huh. which is. Uh, part part Before the small intestine. After stomach. Oh, okay. After stomach, you have oh. this like. Really, the like, crinkly thingy that is attached to your stomach—that's uh, called duodenum. Do you? It's gotta be that one. D. D. <laughs> I choose D. Oh. Mm -hmm. Duo D is like 
Last <laughs> number is 12. It looks like 12 like figures. That's why it's named that. I heard. Um, if the patient has due denial ulcer, it is um, uh, cause it, it causes uh, bleeding. Uh, in, <coughs> it is one of the causes. <laughs> it is one of the upper GI. It's not, it's not the process of elimination. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is um, <coughs> um. Is it like cheese? Hammer it is a cheese in Korea, and fistula is um uh, another um some kind of road the road around your anus. Oh. A road. What's crypt abscesses? You mean yeah. ero erosion? Hole. Yeah, like erosion. Erosion. Mm -hmm. Not road, like a road? Oh, yeah, oh. Like erosion. Oh. Yes, Ero okay. you're right. Yeah. I thought you said road. <laughs> wow. She said erode. Uh, erode. Yeah. Okay. And crypt abscess. Have you heard about this? <coughs> Maybe you... No, I know about that. Um, <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> abscess means so some kind of... In in yeah, in your infection, so but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She yes. has no fever, so yes, yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. She has no she intestinal villus HOV. Yeah, it's the only one left. Intestinal villus atrophy. No more, no more mucosa. What is the impression? What, what, uh, what do you think? Uh, Mm. Inflammatory bowel disease. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, you're right. Yeah. Which this one? this condition is very common. About ten or fifteen percent of the whole population. Mm. So the answer is. F normal. Yes. Oh, it's normal. Yes. Yeah, the PSA oh. is normal. <laughs> so relax, so. lady. Yeah. Oh, I guess I was going to say that. I think she has ideas. My yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't. My yeah. father has an IBS, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic functional GI disorder. It is characterized by chronic abdominal pain and bowel pain relief with bowel movements. So improvement with defecation. Oh. And looser and more frequent stools with the onset of pain. And in the absence of any organic host. So the doctor should um, give assurance, reassurance mm -hmm. um, to the patient. How about so the coffee, coffee color? Yeah, yeah, coffee. yeah. Can I use wood stabilizer for that? Yeah, you can use it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it you said right. that... Um, coffee grounds. <coughs> that was, <coughs> oh, that was the first one. Oh, yeah, this is the first one. Oh, the test. Oh, test. Oh. 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 <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> and, um, but, 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 um, oh. doctors, um, have to um, how, how can I say um, have to mm, have to um, mm, think other cause when the when the patient has weight loss or when the patient uh, wakes up at night because of pain it these are warning sign even if she has just a irritable bowel syndrome but uh, you have to consider other yeah other cause mm -hmm. okay number three. Okay, Chuyo, can you read this? Yeah. Hi, I'm a 27 year old Asian woman present with abdominal pain, diarrhea, and oh, 4.5, what's that? Hound. <laughs> Hound. weight loss for the past, past two months. Mm -hmm. She described the abdominal pain as intermittent, moderate to severe, and located in the right lower quadrant. Over the past 48 hours, the pain has intensified. Her temperature is 37.6 Celsius. Blood pressure is 120 and 70 mm mercury. Pulse is 100 per minute. And respiration are 14 per minute. Several show ulcers are present in her mouth. Dominic's examination shows tenderness in the right lower quadrant without rebound. Rectal examination shows mucus, but the sigmoidoscopy is unremarkable. An X-ray film of the abdomen shows gas in the small and large bowels. Lab, 
laboratory studies shows hemoglobin 10.2 gram per deciliter WBC. A white blood cell 16,500. Uh, 16, and platelet count is 530,000. DSR is 0.8 millimeter. You can see gas from x rays? Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we can see yeah. in a normal person. Shadow, really? Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because other other things are visible, but yeah. gas is just mm -hmm. a black uh, area. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can mm -hmm. just yeah. image it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can see the air in the stomach. Really? In a normal, okay, normal, normal person. Ah, wow. And if it is sick. <laughs> wow! Can I explain the reason why you choose? What did you, you talk from? Actually, yeah, actually no. In wow. actually, in there is no gas in small bowel. Uh huh. Oh. And the pain symptom. Mm -hmm. And actually, you see cannot show in small intestine, mm -hmm. but clostridium can involve involve in oral GI tract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Oh, she lost weight. Oh, yeah. she lost weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah she lost weight. What is Crohn's disease? Um, it is a kind of inflammatory bowel disease. Mm -hmm. So um, when the patient, especially young young women, mm -hmm. young women with abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, mm -hmm. uh, we should consider this mm -hmm. this right. condition. And also, she has a, a, an ulcer in her mouth. This mm -hmm. is after sunset. Maybe you can remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, cold sores? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or sorry, in your mouth. And like the Ju Young said before, um, small, um, in a Crohn's disease, it can involve small bowel, mm -hmm. G, whole the GI tract. Mm -hmm. So any components of GI tract, it can involve. So, wow, well, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great. <laughs> Remember it uh, for your exam. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, cervical colitis and Crohn's disease. Um, it can involve rectum. So, we, okay, you can see uh, rectal bleeding. But Crohn's disease, uh, it can involve whole GI tract. So, it can involve small bowel also. And uh, the complication of you know, cervical colitis, you can uh, you have to remember toxic megacolon. And um, uh, non caseous granuloma, fissure fistula is are the um, characteristics of Crohn's disease. So you have to remember that. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You shouldn't do that. <laughs> Which one is related to uh, uh, some some huh? dermal disease? Dermal? Psoriasis. Psoriasis. Psoriasis? Psoriasis. Oh, dermatology yeah. disease? Yeah, as I remember, something, some of these things is related to psoriasis. Oh, I'm sorry. Psoriasis? Not psoriasis. Psoriasis? Psoriasis. 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 Also related to some immune disease. Because ANCA positive, we can see ANCA positive in you see patients. She might be anchor positive, but I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm not sure. Anchor positive. It is a signal. What the ask? It these two markers are kind of even though it's marker. Just yeah. Number four. Yeah. <laughs> a 42-year-old Caucasian female presents to clinic complaining of severe fatigue and dark yellow urine. Dark yellow. Further in inquiry, <laughs> inquiry reveals that she is also experiencing anorexia, nausea, and malaise. She is uncertain as to when her symptoms began and beliefs they came on gradually. 
She has no chronic illnesses, takes no medications, and has no known drug allergies. She admits to having unprotected intercourse with six different partners Ooh, within the past problem. year. <laughs> Her immunization history does not include vaccination against hepatitis B virus. Laboratory testing reveals the following. Liver studies, total bilirubin, 4.5 mg per deciliter, alkaline phosphatase, 142, mm -hmm. as aspartate, aminotransferase, ASD, SGOD, 184, alanine aminotransferase, ALT, which is 345. Which of the following is the best means of screening for hepatitis B infection in this patient? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. In this patient, um, part... <laughs> 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 I found it. <laughs> How? <laughs> Well, at least the fatigue makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, she has <laughs> severe fatigue and dark yellow urine. And she has uh, her, her liver function test. It's with, uh, these are liver function tests. And um, her AST and ALT are highly elevated, mm -hmm. followed by the rises in bilirubin and ALP also. Elevated. And her medical history, uh, her history, her, um, she has history of multiple sexual partners, so she could be um, infected by hepatitis B virus. So, one two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the best screen test for hepatitis B infection? <laughs> I forgot. I She needs all those. She has six different partners. <laughs> One, two, this three, four. four there's five. Yeah, vaccination oh. is surface right? Oh, sorry, what? Vaccination. After vaccination, we can have surface antigen. Oh, antigen means for no, antibody. Yeah. Oh, antibody. S antibody. Um, after vaccination. After vac yeah, 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 you're right. So, right to the S. And. Actually, actually IgM means infection, not an infection. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is A? Maybe A? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> right? Geo's Korean. Longest day. I did it! <laughs> <laughs> I got two of them, right? <laughs> we don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this is actually this is um, this, this may be diff uh, may be very difficult for um, Mitch or Angela, but we should know because it's very simple. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we should know because um, oh, antigen. We we just mm -hmm. we just choose antigen and one antigen and one antibody for screen to screen for infection. So let's review some part of hepatitis B. We should know the serous markers of hepatitis B to screen. And antigen is the first biological marker detected after inoculation and it appears before symptom. So this is the first. So if the patient is infected, they, uh, he would get antigen positive. And S antibody, it appears after either successful vaccination or the clearance of S antigen. And it remains detectable for life and it could be an indicator of non-infectivity and immunity. So S antibody, <laughs> with, uh, yeah, the patient can get S antibody positive after um, vaccination or clearance of S antigen. And C antibody is, uh, consists of two types of Antibodies, IgM and IgG. And IgM fraction is um, uh, this. This is um, coming when um, the acute acute phase of infection. And this is this means the chronic or uh, from recovery. So in this patient, patient has several symptoms of hepatitis B: fatigue, dark yellow urine, anorexia nausea, malaise and high liver, liver um, enzyme, 
So we could uh, consider an acute phase of hepatitis B infection. So we should, uh, so we should uh, test IgM C antibody. An E antigen, it can be detectable shortly after the appearance of S antigen and indicates active viral replication and infectivity. Mm -hmm. This means high infectivity. An E antibody suggests the cessation of active viral replication and low infectivity. So this patient, we have to um, test S antigen and IgM C antibody. So um, if this patient has S antigen positive and IgM positive, and we, we can consider this patient has uh, acute hepatitis B infection. Okay. So acute is M and chronic is G. Just remember. Yeah, I have to Why is it What's chronic the C? Uh, C is just a core yeah. antigen. Uh, yes, and E, it's only or ML? Oh, uh, because oh. I'm not sure. E antigen? Yeah, E. Uh, it, it is, um, uh, it means the high infectivity. So if the patient has E antigen positive, it, uh, it means uh, the DNA um, replication is very fast. So E meaning for envelope or only? Oh yeah, envelope. Envelope. Maybe. Oh yeah, envelope maybe. Because I was thinking of E means envelope, <coughs> but Professor E means that not envelope only. So right. I was I'm confused. Sure. I was confused. So no, I'm, you, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. You're right. Yeah. It is biology, so I don't know. And this is just forget. Yes. Okay, number five. Uh, can read, <laughs> Mitch, can you please? 52 year old African American male comes for a regular health checkup. This could be easy. He is a chronic smoker and he has been drinking about two beers a day for the past 10 years. <laughs> Not at all. Oh. I like it. He also drinks about seven, <laughs> seven <laughs> cups of coffee a day. Good lord. <laughs> he, was, he was diagnosed with diabetes five years ago. Oh. He takes metformin. Metformin. Metformin, metformin for it. That's diabetic, diabetic drug. Instead of insulin, instead of shots. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, on examination, he has a body mass index of 29 and BP 130 over 80. Uh, his random blood sugar is 190. His elder brother died of pancreatic cancer at age 58. All Steve Jobs. <laughs> and he is worried that he might also get pancreatic cancer, oh, which following beer. interventions would decrease his risk of pancreatic cancer the most. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not A. Not B. Why? Why? Not C. Why? 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 Yeah. Why? <laughs> Stop the alcohol intake. God, come on. He's uh, yeah, smoking and coffee. <laughs> he's afraid he might get pancreatic cancer. That's the problem. Just, Could be. just that? Because he is worried about pan um, getting pancreatic cancer. But I mean, is there any other problem? Just that problem? Yeah, just his BMI is 29, which means that he's like borderline obese. Smoking? Yeah, okay. and he has diabetes. And his BP is kind of high. Yeah. This is pretty healthy it, for yeah. someone who smokes and drinks that much. And <laughs> drinks that much coffee. It's yeah. pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But he's, no, I mean, he's, he's, he's going down. downhill. His diabetes yeah. started kicking in. Kicking in. His uh -huh. cardiovascular um, system is going to go down with it. Yeah. And so and stop the metformin. If he stops that, then all the other problems will go away. Yeah. <laughs> no more drinking. No more smoking. Yeah. But we should. Um, <laughs> Choose only one. Smoking or alcohol or coffee? Smoking. Smoking. Definitely the, the smoking? The, if it's cold and cancer smoking. He should mm -hmm. definitely cut back on coffee. Seven cups is uh -huh. that's too much caffeine. What's his blood pressure? Is that normal? No. I'll put leave me. Yeah. Too, too high, right? A little. Mm -hmm. A little. A little, really? Normal, For normal seven normal. cups of coffee a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, you take that to caffeine intake. <laughs> So, you guys all choose C or B? 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 Really? Okay. Wow. Great. Really? Just yeah, smoking? smoking is. <laughs> smoking is bad for you or? <laughs> of course. And smoking is 
smoking is strongly correlated with um, colon cancer. But not pancreatic cancer, cancer, so he's fine. Oh, cool. <laughs> His pancreas is fine. Pancreatic cancer um, is two or three more highly and heavy smokers. Than in a more patient. Really, pancreatic cancer. Yeah, two yeah. or three times. So really. This is the most consistent consistent factor. Heavy smokers, not light heavy. smokers. Heavy. Light Just smokers heavy. are okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Smoking is bad for you. <laughs> I'm not yeah. heavy smoker. But I don't know if Steve just uh, were. Uh, yeah, was, um, I don't think he is a smoker. No, I don't know. I don't think he has another time. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and Nova. Ooh. Yeah. This is only one dose. Oh, okay. Only also one one dose. Male. And yeah. Male, more age more than fifty. And cigarette smoking is the most consistent male. Factor. <laughs> and uh, chronic pancreatitis is very important. Long standing diabetes. Uh, this patient has diabetes, but um, stopping smoking. Uh, the benefit of stopping. Uh, the benefit of stopping smoking mm -hmm. is way outweigh. How can I say? Outweigh the benefit of um, the not having diabetes. Yeah, yeah. So outweighs the the. The answer is this. Actually, my uncle, my travel opposite, had pancreatic cancer. He is male and he was oh. 50 years old and heavy smoker. Mm. I'm not. I don't know about pancreatitis or diabetes oh. or Oh, okay, I guess it was written. Yeah, maybe I have it. Stop smoking. Yeah. Stop smoking. Okay, she's an email on your 50 years. Yeah, I have it. She has been doing it on your 50 years. She has no long standing diabetes. She is definitely not obese. I can take coffee. Oh, 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 Gift for her. I can also give you to be honest. <laughs> 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 it's because he's bonds <laughs> And you should remember these are not risk factors for pancreatic cancer. Echo, gallstone, coffee intake. It's Whoa. very important. One of the one. <laughs> but I think if someone has gallstone, can have pancreatitis. Yay! Yeah. 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 And that probably like this acute one can go to chronic and <laughs> 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 but we cannot say the risk everything is <laughs> 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 everything is <laughs> yeah. the medicine is multifactorial <laughs> okay number six this is, this is the last custom <laughs> after two <laughs> comments <laughs> Okay, I, 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 do, 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 can you read this, Kester? No, I mean, I'm waiting for... Who can use the mail? I'm just telling you, I'm waiting for health checkup. Oh, my phone, could you? We decided to do age-appropriate screening in this patient and order a colonoscopy. The colonoscopy is normal except for a 1.5 centimeter polyp in the left descending column. Ew. A colonoscopy... <laughs> Polypectomy is done and the biopsy results are pending. The patient is anxious to know the expected biopsy results and the risk of cancer. Yes. Which of the following types of polyps is considered to be most pre-malignant? It's also one of our one jokes. <laughs> yeah. do, I, do I have to answer? Yeah. Do I have to answer or? Oh, no, no, no. Just oh, no, I won't. Oh. No, yes. <laughs> no. You don't have to. I don't know. Hyperplastic polyp? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, part. I'm just picking it. Tubular villus adenoma. Oh, you're almost there. Tubular adenoma. I can, I can show the picture. I can show the picture. And the other side. Ooh, yeah. 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 This is tubular. tubular. This is a stalk. It has stalk and villus. <laughs> More at, at oh. uh, increases. It's like a tree in a bush. Oh yeah, right. a <laughs> tree bush. What's the difference between CSI and villus? tree and a bush. Oh, what? 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 What's the difference between CSI and villus? CSI and villus. Um, I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, no. CSI uh, so and villus is the same term, different same name. Term? Oh. Same term? Oh. Really? And the uh, pedicular and tubular is the same, the same term, oh. different names. Mm -hmm. Oh. Why? 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 Why?
Oh, that's funny. Huh? Okay. And, okay, calling mm. polyps. Um, it is um, a growth of uh, extra tissue in the large intestine. It, oh we call this polyp. And most polyps are just benign. It, 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 um, it does not go to cancer. But some types of polyps um, can turn into cancer over time. Hyper these, among these polyps, hyperplastic and hamartomactose polyps, <coughs> these are just benign. So we do not, um, we do not, we do not, um, th these are not require, um, these are, we are um, not require further workup. And, but how adenomatous polyps, these are neoplastic, so um, um, if it is an adenomatous, uh, we can, uh, we have to biopsy and we have to work uh, for the work, for the workup. Mm -hmm. And the risk factors for polyps progressing into malignancy, these are very important. So we have to remember that. Villas says I don't know this is the same. I didn't know the same. I'm not sure. What's the meaning of Hamar Toma? It's like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I can explain. Yeah. Yeah. Size are, if the size is large, it also increases the risk. Okay.